Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Wrath of the Righteous with me, Bring It Down. So we only have one direction left to go in the prison. That is this way. You know what to do. I did off camera was buff up, and I looked around the map. I didn't see another paths that we could potentially take. So we're just gonna push forward. I know the way. I am prepared. Time's not waiting. This spell doesn't work like that. Let's try this way. Get out of this, Rocco. Another obelisk destroyed. And awaken the magic circle. The immense statue is watching you impassively. Its horn head suddenly leans forward and gives you a sly wink. It's still not too late to kneel before me. You admit here and now that you have no master other than me. I'll grant you permission to take your own life. Swiftly and painlessly. You're not actually expecting me to kill myself, are you? Why not? I'm showing you great mercy by allowing you to bleed out right now, if my executioners get to you. You've heard the screams of your angel. Or rather, my angel. That's a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? Then go through all the hassle of fighting our enemies. We could have just asked them politely to take their own lives. Demon Lord Logic, everybody. What word are you going to ask me this time? The statue lurches into motion, its heavy footfalls causing the hall to quake. No more riddles, only ruin. It's time you return to dust, foolish mortal creature. Here. That's a really cool it. sequence. That was a really poor attempt on Baphomet's part to stop me. <laughs> Follow my the goddess protects us. All right, so according to Baphomet, he's got executioners waiting for us here. For the beauty with your heart. Is the heart's greatest challenge. Hmm. He looks different. No mistakes. <laughs> All right. Focus on the goal. Sorry, my character's too big. I can't move forward. The tall shadow shifts toward you slightly. You see a familiar form. The familiar golden armor, but how much has changed? The malevolent glow streams from the pierced breastplate and cracked helmet, but the change goes much deeper than that. All signs of life and emotion have been drained from the hand of the inheritor. His movements are sharp and precise, mechanical. The gesture is impersonal and hollow, as is his voice. Commander, Don Quixote, I have been waiting for you. The Lord of the Labyrinth has revealed his plan to me. Former Herald of Iomade speaks in a monotone as if he is commenting on the weather. He used me to open portals to your lands. He said my soul reached out to you. I do not know why. Out of vengeance or as a plea for help. Or perhaps merely out of habit. Baphomet told me you would come for me. That he would prevail either way. Whether I destroy you or you destroy me. 
Former allies tearing each other to shreds can only benefit him. Curious. Most curious indeed. What's that black liquid that's oozing out of you? Blood? Unlikely. Hold on now, don't move. I need to take a sample. In a swift motion, Anir catches a drop of the slimy fluid seeping out of the holes in the hand's armor, the tip of her finger. Sniffs it, then suddenly licks it clean. Hmm. Definitely not blood. Phlegm? Sap? Ectoplasm? It's closest to sap. Hypothesis. Some angels are of plant origin. Keep this up. You become the architect of the wound in your own stomach. Angel of Light. What has that monster done to you? Rusli looks at the hand of the inheritor in horror. I've seen those who have fallen low because of their own foolishness. Because of others' temptations. My own temptations. But you never even had a choice. You've not made a single mistake. Yet you have been corrupted by brute force. What has Baphomet done to you? He killed me without letting me die. The Echo of Discari gave him some suggestions on how to sustain me and how to use me further. We'll save you. I don't know how. We'll think of something. Just hold on. I... I know what it's like when you're not yourself anymore. But you can't die. This isn't the end. Fight this. Do you hear me? Fight it. And everything will be alright. I can give you your heart back. Why? I have no need for it any longer. It holds no faith in you, Commander. You are a lie. It holds no faith in me. I was so glad to be lied to. And a heart devoid of faith is empty. All the Minotaurs got scared and just ran away. <laughs> Into the fray. You are strong, but here in my realm, my power knows no bounds. I would have only your will, only will your victory into nothingness, and it would be done. Minion, you filled with my power and kill the interloper. Now I'll let you take his heart, as I took yours. It feels like I'm tired of Baphomet showing up and debuffing me. <laughs> That's the second time he's done that. Uh, the former angel falls to one knee. But even now, his movements are lifeless, apathetic. One who has no heart knows no pain. The end is near, as expected. The hand of the inheritor his heart back. No more. I bring you back to life. He shakes his head. It won't work. Great such a miracle. One needs purity. You lack it. As do I. My light is lost. Save my heart in the spark of light that still remains within. Deep breath bursts forth from his chest. My first downfall was brought about by an axis of faith. Now my lack of faith dooms me. It's over. This is the end. So there has to be a way to save him. I think because I was chaotic, or in Azada, I couldn't. Maybe the Angel Path can save him. I feel like... 
I took most of his advice, didn't I? Maybe not. You feel a strong jolt in your bag. Or you can think. Hand reaches inside and pulls out the angel's heart. The entire time that Amade's warrior was bound by Baphomet's dark enchantments, the heart has been beating, preserving the life of the hand of the inheritor. Now the angel is dead. His heart has finally gone still. But it still emanates a sense of the serene, pure stalwart power that Amade's herald possessed in life. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Burn the remains of the hand of the inheritor. The angel's heart bursts into purifying flame that soon turns golden. You must feel the weight of a strong hand resting on your shoulder, and the silent touch sends gratitude and brief soldierly wishes of good luck in the coming battles. The world has suffered enough. I know what to do. My will is resolute. Really, he only had a flaming longsword plus two. They also had Assertion of Dominance. This plus five heavy shield grants its wielder immunity to slashing and piercing damage while the wielder is at full health. Immunities are good. I don't think it holds a candle up to the undying love of the Hopebringer. Alright, I guess we're done there. Shame I couldn't save our angel bro. All right, back to Dresden. Then we can do Denio's quest. I almost forgot about that. Lich Zacharias arrives accompanied by a tall old man. His broad shoulders and proud posture make it clear this man is once a warrior, and his stern face is covered by the ritual scars of the peoples of Garond. Zacharias' voice is dry and commanding. Don Quixote, when you listen to this mortal, accept his gift before he embraces merciful oblivion. You must not tarry. He looks so ancient, I think you may need my magic if you wish to hear his story through to the end. Lich gestures for the old man to speak. Old Verut using Dugoth's portrait. One of my favorite portraits from Kingmaker. The old man nods with dignity and hands you a pair of bracers carved from the bark of a tree. His deep and sonorous voice rolls over the entire fortress. Commander, this relic holds great power. My own power, not power borrowed from another. I poured all my zeal and courage into them, but seventy dry seasons have since passed. It is now time for us to part. Accept my gift. May it bring you good fortune. But first, hear my story. Why did you bring this man to me? Because he must win this war. Once the war wound is defeated, the oaths holding me here will become void, and I'll be free once more. After a century, my rash vows will finally stop ruining my unlife. But to win, even you need guidance. And you're so obstinate. You rejected all paths that were open to you. You fuse both Nauticula and Iomade. You're a difficult case, but there's a reason I'm known as a good mentor. I found a piece of wisdom that will be useful to you. And what kind of bracers are these? These bracers hold the resentment we mortals bear for the inhabitants of other worlds who seek to impose their wills and en enmity upon us. While they were on my arms, I performed countless amazing feats and emerged victorious from battles with truly terrifying foes. Look closely at this artifact, you'll know you have never seen its equal. It's the work of arcane art from a bygone era. You should thank me and your destiny that you had the honor to witness such a treasure, even once in your life. Well, who are you, Venerable One, and what is your story? My name is Varut, and I hail from the Chog tribe that dwells in faraway Garund. 
Since ancient times, our tribe has waged war against the nearby Hasi tribe, because the spirits of Chog and Hasi were at war. We mortals follow the spirits. When I was 15, my father, the chief of the Chog, which is a silly phrase, the chief of the Chog, I was slain by the Hasi. I took his spear and donned his war mantle. I became the new chosen one for the spirits of Chog, led them into battle. The young man's voice resonates with strength and dignity, and I was mighty. The spirits loved me. Enemies fled from me. We punished the Hasi and avenged my father, and many warriors that came before him. We inflicted grievous harm and grave wounds. We broke their spirits, as they had broken ours. I know you know nothing of this war, but it was cruel and bloody. It consumed our lands. Thousands perished. A confrontation of spirits at the other side of the world, and you haven't even heard about. Then I put an end to everything. I remember the days as if it were yesterday. We waited until the Hasi warriors had gone hunting, crept into their village to kill their wives and children, and desecrate their idols. And then I had an epiphany. I realized this war between the spirits that had enslaved us mortals, and turned us into their playthings. And so I threw down my spear and war mantle. I left, and went out into the desert, where I found a lone withered tree, and carved bracers out of its bark. I poured all my anger and resentment into their making. And then I returned to end the war. We made peace with the Hasi tribe, and together, we banished our jealous spirits. Oh, how they tried to win my friendship with gifts of bright feathers and shiny metal. But from that day on, I relied only on the bracers I carved from the bark of a dead tree. Though I may be old, I can still defeat any enemy. My bracers contain my strength and warrior spirit. I chose to be mortal, and not the chosen of one of higher powers. I chose freedom and unfettered will, and I never regretted it. So know that I respect your path, and I'm proud of you, my fated brother. So I can recruit him as a general? The invincible general season in many wars is recruited. Or legendary bracers. Oh, hold on now. Okay. So, Legendary Bracers. These Bracers grant they wear a plus 5 deflection bonus to armor class, a plus 5 natural armor enhancement bonus to armor class, a plus 5 resistance bonus on all saving throws, and a plus 6 enhancement bonus on all ability scores. It can only be equipped by the player character. Sorry, two all ability scores. Um, I accept your gift, and thank you. Yomi respectfully hands you the Bracers, and bows his head. I wish you luck, Don Quixote. Conquer your spirits as we, the Chog Warriors, defeated ours. May there always be freedom among mortals. As the bracers slip from Farut's palms, his shoulders bend under the weight of years. His gray hair loses its lustrous shine, and his once proud posture slumps. Unwavering strength leaves the once mighty warrior. Our business here is done. Make good use of my gift, I'll go back to my magical research. I've clearly given you enough help. So I'll finally be rid of this annoying devil and boisterous dragon. From now on, let them shower you with presents. Alright, pretty sweet. Right, let's check in on our decrees, we'll rest up, and then we'll set out for Nenio's quest. Heart blood. A scouting party has discovered a blood spring that heals wounds and can even save those who are terminally ill. The healers are asking for permission to use this blood in the making of healing potions, but there are numerous accounts of those healed by the waters of the spring that become more hateful and ruthless. It will permit the practice. Using potions of blood from the spring has produced certain results. Many soldiers have recovered and become stronger on top of it. it has become easier for them to recuperate from wounds. The rage that has awakened within the healed warriors helps them dominate their foes. Alright, the fate of Zaurus is his pin. I think I'm saying that right. 
Zaris' blood, which coated the pin when she died, turned into metal and fused with the tip. The craftsmen of the crusade are asking you to give them the pin so they can place it inside a relic. They need the commander to decide what sort of item it will be. Hmm. Go with the ring. Executioner. A chilling truth about one of Dresden's jailers has come to light. He secretly became a worshipper of Zond Kuthon, terrorized all the prisoners, and learned magic that allowed him to use his brutal punishments to leech the life force from his victims. Uh, punish the jailer. What does terrifying do? That's pretty good, but no. Yeah, punish the jailer. Backlights of Zon Kuthon do not belong in a sacred army. Seeing the jailer punish convinced the soldiers that they were right to follow the commander. Alright, next relic. Enchanting the Wicked Dope. <laughs> this is a silly name. As it should be. No dialogue again. It's weird. No camp banner. That is not far. Oh, let's take care of this real fast. My right, level 20 Grey Boar gets Slayer Talent, Study Target, and Master Slayer. At 20th level, the Slayer becomes a master at capturing or killing his study targets. As a standard action, you can make a single attack against a study target at its full attack bonus. If the attack succeeds, the target takes damage normally, and must succeed at a fortitude saving throw or die. The DC for this save is 10 plus half the Slayer's level, plus the Slayer's Intelligence modifier. Whether or not the target succeeds, it cannot be targeted by this ability again, by any Slayer, for 24 hours. Give a point into Intelligence, since that ability uh, scales off of Intelligence. Odd that it's not a recommended attribute for him. My athletics, mobility, stealth, and perception. Sorry, I gave him the lizard familiar. It gives him a plus one bonus uh, to natural armor. And uh, plus one to perception. Not super important. I'm not going to use it in my party either way, but. My Regil, level 10 Armager, gets Ardent. For the point to Dexterity, Knowledge Arcana, Lore Religion, and Persuasion. Alright, and Darren gets Final Revelation. At 20th level, an oracle learns the final revelation about her mystery, granting her amazing powers and abilities. The nature of these bonuses depends upon the oracle's mystery. I pointed to Charisma. Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Use Magic Device. I think Overwhelming Presence probably matches Darren the best. So, best thematic choice there. Alright, Ember gets a Hex. Pointed to Charisma. Dodge Arcana, Lore Religion, Use Magic Device.
Seems pretty good. So regenerative sinew. Uh, the witch can cause the debil debilitating wounds of a creature she touches to quickly close, helping it heal rapidly. The target gains fast healing 5 for a number of rounds equal to half the witch's class level, where it heals up to 4 points of ability score damage from 2 ability scores. Once a creature has benefited from this hex, it cannot benefit from it again for 24 hours. Alright, Wolgif gets Master Strike and a Rogue Talent. Master Strike. When reaching 20th level, Rogue becomes incredibly deadly when dealing sneak attack damage. Each time the Rogue deals sneak attack damage, she can slay the target. The target receives a Fortitude save to negate the death effect. The DC of this save is equal to 10 plus half the Rogue's level, plus the Rogue's Dexterity modifier. Once a creature has been the target of a Master Strike, regardless of whether or not the save is made, that creature is immune to that Rogue's Master Strike for 24 hours. Went to Dexterity, Mobility, Trickery, Perception, Use Magic Device, and Stealth. If I'm familiar as well. Um, yeah, we'll grab him the Cat Familiar. Couple of communal buffs, why not? I think that's everybody. Uh, where are they at? Not where they're supposed to be. Move them up this way. And I use Call to Arms on this army. Make them a little tougher. I think he's going to go this way. Let's send them back here. If not, I have a teleport up, so if I... I'm not worried about it. We're not going to run out of time. They're not going to siege anything until I lose it. Uh, let's go and recruit these guys and himself. So I forgot about that. We gotta can scroll down there. Um, where's it at? Them down here. Where my army at? Alright, I'm going to call the episode here, and the next one we're going to go to... Nameless Ruins and do Nenio's quest. Still haven't found the tablets for Final Veil. Been a little concerned about it. We still haven't gone to Eyes, and I know that we have to go to Threshold after Eyes. I, unless the game streamlines us and forces us to go to Threshold directly after Eyes. Um, it's possible we can find them in 
in this city, so not going to fret about it just yet. Yeah, next episode to the Nameless Ruins, do Nenio's quest, and we'll just keep trekking from there. But for now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.